Let me uh, invite up Ryan Canuel, who is the CEO and co-founder of Petrocor. Uh, Ryan is a recent graduate and one of the more impressive entrepreneurs I've seen in many years. Um, I'm going to just keep going on about how great you are, Ryan, until you... <laughs> but uh, Ryan's done some really amazing stuff, some things that are very difficult in the game business, and uh, I'll let him tell you about it. Thank you, Monty. Um, so, uh, I'm Ryan Canuel. I run the studio Petrocore, and we're located here in Worcester. Uh, we're over at the Innovation Center, which is over in downtown town right next to City Hall. Um, so, um, I'll start talking. Um, uh, Petrocore, uh, we develop mobile games. Um, so that means uh, games for Android and iOS devices. And first, I'll start off with what is Petrocore, because that's something people always ask me about. Uh, it's the smell after a rainstorm. So the word actually means, you know, that nice uh, earthy smell. Um, that's what it actually means. Um, but I, uh, I spelled it wrong um, when, we, when we wrote it up on the board. Um, but we like the way that I spelled it wrong, so, so it stuck. And that's how we have the name. Um, we do mobile and VR development. Uh, so uh, I, I explained mobile. VR is more um, virtual reality. Uh, we did an app um, with a, a company, Attunity, and, and Jen's here to talk a little bit more about that. Um, so I won't go into great detail explaining it. Uh, we also were contractors. Um, so we do a lot of contracts for companies that are looking for things um, you know, in and outside of games. So we've worked on apps. We've worked on game-related apps. Like I said, we're Worcester-based. Uh, we're all Becker grads on the team. Um, there's a few people who are still in Becker. Um, but we're, we're all, you know, we've been here for the last few years now. Um, so we started uh, this in, uh, right after graduation in May. Uh, so we knew that we wanted to do this and, you know, we, we started laying the framework. We got our first contract put together and we were really lucky that uh, we were, I think we were, we were officially set up as a company the day before graduation, the day after graduation, we were able to get started on building our first app, um, which was, Good, good, good timing. Uh, we were also winner of uh, the Startup Worcester program, so if some of you were here earlier, um, they did an announcement that they're starting the new year of that, but uh, for the first year that we ran that, we applied for that, we, we were one of the chosen winners. Um, so we got, we got a lot of great stuff for that. Uh, and we're also, we're a six-person team. Um, some of that six-person team is here today. Um, and, um, so I'll go over what we've done up until this point. So um, to start, that, that first app that I was talking about that we developed when we first got started, it was this app called Mentor at Hand. So we worked with the vascular surgeon, and he wanted, to, um, he wanted to fix some communication issues that were occurring within hospitals. He wanted to give an anonymous way to report issues that might be occurring within a hospital. So we helped him develop that. And while we were developing that, we were taking that money and we were pulling it into building our own game, which was called Mind the Arrow. Um, and we, uh, we worked on that right when we got started. And then we, we, we released um, in July. We worked with uh, the company Attunity to build Attunity VR. Um, and then while we were doing that and working on another contract, we were building our second game called um, Gelato Flicker. And that one, you, as the name indicates, flick gelato that comes in on the screen. Um, it's like a puzzle game. Um, and then we're also working with a company here in Worcester. Um, they're uh, working on an app that, that they're developing. Uh, so, Mind the Arrow. Uh, so, like I said, we released this game uh, right at the end of July, so July 29th. Um, and then immediately after releasing it, we were really lucky we got featured on iOS and Android. Um, so that just means uh, the, the picture there, we were on the front page um, for uh, the App Store, and then we were, um, we were on the front page for Google Play as well. Um, and being on that front page led to about 200,000 installs off the game, which was, which was really great. It was, um, you know, for us, we released this kind of as a game to test the waters. 
we wanted to learn from it. You know, we hadn't done a lot of, we, you know, we worked on games before, we hadn't had a serious release as a team yet. So it was kind of a way to, to figure out, um, you know, if, if we were doing it right. Uh, we were able to learn a lot from releasing it. Uh, we're also planning an update that'll be out in mid-December. And that's to address kind of some of the lessons that we learned from that, and I'll, I'll go into more detail with that in a little bit. Um, like I said, we, we learned a lot from it. Um, so here, since um, if a picture is worth a thousand words, I don't know how much a video is worth, but um, I brought a video to uh, show you the trailer that we have for Mind the Arrow so you can get a better idea of what I'm talking about. So it was, a, uh, it, was a, it was a matching game. Um, it's very similar to the game Simon, if you've ever played that before. Um, but there was an arrow involved, so there was a, uh, we, we described it as a literal twist. So, now to go over some of the lessons learned from Mind the Arrow. Um, and I think a lot of these apply to some of the gamification that, uh, that Monty was talking about. Um, first off, the game should be fun. Um, and I think that that's something that, uh, you know, it makes, makes a lot of sense when you say it, but sometimes it's something that you gloss over and you don't always think about. Um, things come along and you end up developing it and then, and then you get to a certain point and you're like, wait a minute, this isn't as fun as when we first started and are we, are we focusing on the fun when we're building the game? I mean, it, it comes down to in the end, if, if whatever you're building isn't fun, no, no one's going to want to play it in the end. Um, and I think that applies too to if, uh, you know, if, if, if you're starting some sort of a gamification program, it, it should be enjoyable to use. And also, the game should be fair. Um, so uh, it should be um, easy to get in, um, start playing whatever it is that you're doing. Um, you should feel like uh, there's a challenge to it, but it's also there isn't anything, you know, that, that, that's happening within the game that, that isn't fair for you. Uh, Retain users. So this was something that, that was really important and we learned a lot about this while we were doing it. The idea of, um, you know, once we get an install, how do, we, how do we stretch that install out for as long as we can? How do we retain the player that we just got? Like I said, we got about uh, 200,000 installs from the game, which was great, but we, we didn't do as best of a job of retaining those installs once we got them. And that was something that we learned a lot about, um, you know, better ways to go about doing that. Um, so, so one of those things was a, a sense of progression in the game. Um, the feeling that, that, that as you invest your time in it, you're getting better at it, and that what you're getting out of it is actually worthwhile for you. And I, and I think uh, Monty talked about that, but that, um, you know, that there's a reason that you're actually doing it and, and what you're getting out of it, is, it has value to you. Daily rewards. So this is something that... Uh, a lot of games do, and, and we didn't do this when we released Mind the Arrow, but kind of providing an incentive to come back and play another day. Um, you want someone to keep coming back day after day, and, and that was something that we learned um, that, that, we, that we plan on incorporating with the update. Um, and then also notifications and reminders, just kind of poking someone and being like, hey, this game exists, you've installed it on your phone, why don't you come back and try it again? You haven't played in two or three days. Well, that's something that a ton of games do. Um, and it, it, you know, love it or hate it, it actually works reasonably well to get people to come back. Um, worthwhile rewards, so, um, you know, is, is what you're actually giving someone worthwhile to them? Um, you know, you, you can give people rewards, but it might not be something that they actually care anything about or want to use. Um, making sure that there's enough content. So, you know, is, is there enough there that people actually want to interact with. Um, so then I I'm going to talk a little bit more about the app that we developed because we incorporated a lot of these gamification elements into this app, Mentor at Hand. This was the first one that we built. Um, so this was about a two and a half month project that we worked on this for. Uh, it was a hospital social network, like I, like I mentioned, and it was to address communication issues. Basically it was a way, um, the original pitch that I heard from this, and this was with the surgeon that we were working with, was that surgeons are all assholes. 
and that there should be a way to fix that. Um, and so he said um, that he wanted a way to anonymously report that the surgeon that uh, if, you know, if you feel like you were being abused by someone above you, that you could go into this app, you could anonymously report that you felt like something wrong was happening. And the same thing goes for um, if you had uh, you know, a question, if you were new to a hospital and you, you had a question that you wanted to ask and you didn't feel comfortable um, asking that you know, at, as, you know, in person, you could ask it anonymously through this app. Um, so uh, one thing that we learned, so we had this whole original um, version of the app that we'd made for him. And we, we did a lot of that based on the fact that we were like, we're developing this for a hospital. We need to make it, you know, very hospital-like, clean and stark and, um, you know, like, like most apps. And we, we had hospital in mind. And he didn't like this at all when we sent it to him. Um, you know, he... Uh, he described to us, he's like, I don't want this. I deal with this all day. I want something fun. I think the word that he used to describe it was he wanted Starbursts, the app, um, was how he described the style that he wanted. So we had to go back to the drawing board and change the way that we'd done the app. Um, so we had the start prototype, and I'll show you kind of what that looked like, and then the final alpha version that we ended up with. Um, so when we first started, we had um, this, this was what it originally looked like. Um, and it was very kind of, uh, you know, we had the, the dark background, we had the different, you know, there was, there was bits of color in there, um, but he, I think uh, the, he described this as we, um, we made an app for uh, Ayn Rand, um, which, uh, you know, looking at it, it's a, it, you know, it's a, it's a little, um, you know, we, we built it, again, with like the, the hospital setting in mind. Um, so, now to show you kind of what we changed about that, so, you know, he, he, he told us that he wanted fun. So we started with, um, we, we redid the logo, we made it more colorful. Um, there's, you know, the different colors in it, that's the smooth kind of heart shape. The login screen, everything was very smooth and bright. Um, the main page totally changed, um, where, you know, there's a lot more color on it now. Um, you can see right near, there's the person's face and my preferences. And right near that, I don't know if you can read it from that far away, but it says um, Ma Points, so it was Mentor at Hand Points. And that was this like point system that we had. You'll see it in these two, which were Gut Questions and Gut Answers, where, you know, are you asking a question and then answering a question? Those were the screens that you do it in. And on the bottoms of those, right above Submit, it's also got Questions Award 2 points, Answers Award 5 points. So, um, there was a little bit, you know, this was still early alpha that we were developing this for. So this, you know, the UI probably would have changed a lot before the final product. This was, this was where we ended up bringing it to. And there was that sort of gamification system in it where um, by interacting with the app and using it and taking part in the community, you'd be rewarded with points. Um, his, his big plan was to eventually uh, provide uh, substantial rewards like gift cards and, you know, find out more about the user and what they're interested in and then give them what they'd like um, for interacting and getting high amounts of points and then also badges to show off to people and things like that. So that was, that was where we ended up bringing this to. So now our own rewards within Petricor is a company because um, we're a game company and if it wasn't fun to work at a game company, uh, I don't know. <laughs> um, so... Uh, these are still kind of in early stages of like us trying to figure out um, what's, what, what's fun, what do people like. Um, so we've changed around our, our reward system a little bit um, and just played around with different things. So I've got some pictures on the sides there of, of different things we've done. So when we first started, what we did was we had this program contractor of the month um, where We'd pick someone who did an exceptional job. Everybody would vote, and they'd say, "This, you know, who who, uh, who on the team went above and beyond and did a really great job this month." So uh, the first month we did it, uh, we have the picture um, kind of on the on the left side, the left center picture. That's one of our programmers, uh, James Spavald, and he uh, he was contractor of the month that month. So I I would go out, I'd put together this like gift prize basket that we'd get. Um, I think his was like a bunch of toys. It was like a be a kid again basket. Um, following that, Christina, um, our artist, she won the next uh, contractor of the month. And that one was, uh, that, that theme was keeping your cool even when you lose your cool. 
and that one was like, there was summer and squirt guns, and I kept, I put the in you lose your cool because I, I wanted to buy Rock'em Sock'em Robots, and I couldn't really fit it into the theme, so I, I changed it around a little bit. Um, then, after that, we started doing a free dinner because everybody likes free food, and that was kind of a way to reward people, like, hey, you know, everybody's working really hard, you're doing a great job this month, so take people out to dinner kind of as an end of the month celebration of look at, look at how far we've come and where we're at. Um, then we actually, one thing that we did, we did a day off and a, a visit to a park. We were the only ones to visit it um, that day. I think it might have been closed and I don't know if we were allowed to be there, but no one stopped us. Um, so that was a picture up in the top corner there. Um, and that was actually a really fun day um, just to kind of take a break from game development and go out in the woods. It's not something that you'd expect game developers to go do, but it was a lot of fun. Um, we also, we use this uh, task tracking project management system called Kanban. Um, and basically, uh, I don't have a picture of it, but it, it's a, a board that we put up on the wall and we put sticky notes on the board and each of them is an individual task someone claims and they move it along the board. And when it's done, you take the sticky note off and you've successfully accomplished whatever it is that the task that you have to go um, do is. Um, so it's almost like kind of like a quest system that you go on where you put up the different things that people can choose what it is that they want to do. They put their name on it. They take, uh, the, you know, they take assignment of that task, move it along, and finish it up. Um, so, we, so we use that. Um, and also we have uh, music that we'll play in the office. And people who um, you know, will do a random drawing and, and people will get to pick whatever it is. They can control what everybody has to listen to that day. Um, I somehow want to tie Kanban into the music in the office and some other things because once you finish a sticky, you can sign your name on it and stick it in a box and kind of become part of some sort of a drawing of a prize. I don't know what that will be yet, but just so that they know that I have plans in the work. Um, and we also, uh, the, the last thing that we do is we, uh, we gamify our games. So we'll go to game events and we, you know, at a game event there's a there's like you know, 30 to 50 other tables of other games, um, and we want to get them to come to our table. Um, so what we'll always do is we'll have like a contest for our game, or we'll have a prize that we give away. And um, that's actually worked out reasonably well for us. We'll have like a board that we put up, and we'll put people's high scores up so that um, we found it works really well. We attract a fair amount of nut jobs who um, you know, kind of loom around for a little too long. Um, but they always want to like fight and beat their friends and, and do really well. Um, so we put their names up on the board. And at the end, um, we give them a prize for being the, the, the top, the best player. And then we put them up on our social media that they were the winner. And um, we found that that actually works pretty well for attracting people to come look at our product. Um, so that, that's about it that I have um, about us and kind of how we use gamification. Like I said, my name's Ryan. Um, there's my email and our website. Um, we're actually we're hosting our own uh, kind of like game networking event to celebrate the launch of our game, and that's over at the Innovation Center. There's an event right up on it. Um, that's on the 27th of this month, and it's uh, going to be an ice, a free ice cream event. Um, if you spend $10 to buy a ticket, you can actually pick the topping that you're going to force on everyone else to have. Um, I will work with you if you have something really weird that you want on your ice cream. Um, and of course, we're always looking for contract work. So, um, you know, we've worked with, uh, we've been lucky enough that we've worked with three clients and I learned recently that we'll be working with a fourth one, but you know, we're, we're always looking for more things, especially uh, game related app development. Um, so if you know anyone or you're looking for something like that, I'm more than happy to talk to you, but uh, thank you.